a lot of the companies offer like a bounty for vulnerabilities. So anybody intercepts a VPN traffic in the middle, they don't see anything, they only see garbage. I used to make calls to India for free. I shouldn't say that here, but. <laughs> Usually what hacking means is you come up with some real tricks and technique to get around and making a specific thing or usually program work. Those days people try to get around something that doesn't work. You use small switches or any controls or get around the normal way of doing and trying to get it work. That's how the hacking started. Over time, people started doing like more complicated thing and trying to manipulate how it's supposed to work and trying to do different things. For example, if a specific machine or instrument is supposed to do one thing you're trying to make it do like a two or three different things which is not intended to do and that's what usually called hacking but in modern days there are several levels of hacking so people hack different things there are different kinds of hacking like a black hat hacking white hat hacking and there's a gray hat hacking black hat hacking where people have different motives they wanted to make money or sabotage or corporate espionage or nation state trying to steal information from another state that's like a black hat hacking white hat hacking usually is for corporations and people like myself trying to help organization uh, safeguard their network infrastructure everything so that's a uh, white hat hacking and there's a gray hat hacking where people sometimes sometimes cross from white hat to gray hat to certain things. For example, a lot of the companies offer like a bounty for vulnerabilities. If you find any vulnerabilities, you can actually ask them, report to them first and ask them for some compensation and they'll usually give you money rather than they're getting a bad reputation on their product. So VPNs are like a virtual private network. Most commercial VPNs are built on a framework called IPsec, uh, Internet Protocol Security. I'm gonna get nerdy on this one. If you use uh, AES, which is Advanced Encryption Standard, that's the key name that is used in IPsec. If you used a 256 key strength on the AES, for IPsec, which is also called VPN network from point to point from your location to another location, everything from your location before it gets out on the internet is encrypted. So anybody intercepts a VPN traffic in the middle, they don't see anything, they only see garbage. I can capture your packet once it's encrypted by VPN. It'll say where it's going, but if I look inside the data, I can't see anything, it's all garbage. If I want to interpret that by brute force, I probably need a, like a supercomputer and maybe like a, hundreds of years to brute force attack and decrypt it, which is not practical. So VPN is safer. I think I like Matrix. Matrix been like well thought out. It's way, way ahead of its time when it came out in like early 2000s. At that time, I didn't understand a lot of the things. Now Mr. I'm like looking back at those things and plugging yourself into the head jack and going into the Matrix and playing all these games and all the scenes and all the details in that thing. That was amazing. So I think that was like pretty way ahead of its time. So the freaking is a technique that's been used a long time ago. Nobody uses that because it uses on a public switch network on a long distance. You use different tones to manipulate uh, different signals. Sometimes people try to make free long distance calls by using this technique. They don't use that anymore. It used to do with hacking into the like, public analog phone system because analog phone system works on like a tones and if you press a different key, it get different tones. I used to do that when I was really young. I used to make calls to India for free. I shouldn't say that here, but <laughs> people don't do that anymore. It's a, like a really old technique, and um, I don't even know if it's going to work now. Lights out for a minute, all right? I have a um, master's degree in computer science. I started getting into the network engineering in early 2000. Then I started going into cybersecurity around that time. And I was uh, really interested in finding out and going into the details of certain things. And when I started, there wasn't not a lot of tools and a lot of things available. Nowadays, you got tons of tools. So I started with one certificate, then I had more certificate like ethical hacking, uh, CI, 
SM, which is Certified Information Systems Manager, CISA. GMOB, which is the GAC Mobile Device Security Analyst, which talks about mobile pen testing, how hacking into a wireless system, how to hack into iPhone, Android, how to reverse engineer an app on um, Android and actually put codes into it and actually have that mobile phone dial different numbers. So there's a lot of things I've learned. I have done like small hacking here and there for my educational purpose. I don't do, you know, other like uh, illegal activity. And I supported and helped a lot of organizations to secure themselves. Secure means actually you can only reduce risk in terms of cybersecurity. There's no such thing called protecting completely. You cannot protect anything when it's on the internet. You can reduce your risk. If a data or something get exposed, you can actually do certain controls. So those are the things I do, but I've been doing this for 15 plus years. So like I said, I have about seven, eight, and I'm working on another one next week. So I'll probably have like a somewhere like a nine or 10 certification. And I practice full end-to-end -end cybersecurity. Most of the people think hacking is only cybersecurity. That is an offensive cybersecurity, but there's defensive cybersecurity to protect everything. And there's also compliance, governance. You make sure all the laws and everything is followed. For example, like a privacy, you don't want to expose your social security and all the personal information. So the cybersecurity is a complete spectrum, not only hacking, not only protecting. You just have to do everything. And in terms of protecting everything, if there's an incident, how you protect, like what are the steps you do? When do you call the FBI, a law enforcement agent? So it's, it's just a whole spectrum of things. So I practice the complete spectrum. Trump. Ready for some fun? So hacking in United States, there are a lot of consequences if you get caught, depending upon what type of thing you do. For example, if you hack into an airplane and make the plane come down, you are actually responsible for all the lives in that airplane. If you hack into a hospital, like there's all this ransomware, you make the hospital completely inoperable because you actually completely shut down the servers and everything, then you are actually not helping all the people who are in need of uh, emergency care in the hospital. So there's a lot of consequences based on what type of active, what you did and what your responsibility in terms of hacking. For example, if you log into your neighbor's computer and try to look for data that may not be you know that much bad but if you do something like i said like an airplane or like grave damage to the national security infrastructure like a livelihood then there's going to be a big consequences so i don't know about like specific loss and everything depending on the amount of damage and intent and everything you do there's going to be consequences and you will get caught so don't try to hack and try to get away from it i asked if you came alone there's uh, my favorite um, movie on oh this screen sorry yeah, not yeah. the oh, I'm sorry oh, okay. I was yeah. looking all this time sorry about that okay. <laughs> do we want to do the VPN That's thing or, okay no.